And finally, we are now in a place where we can exploit the fact that the trials are independent. To come to a right understanding of the structure, let's take a simple test case. Suppose, for definiteness, that we threw 6 on the first trial and that we won on the 10th trial. So if we won on the 10th trial and we threw 6 on the first trial, then here's a kind of picture that might emerge. Trials are running from left to right, 1 through 10. 6 is what we threw on the first trial. And then there are trials 2 through 9, followed by trial 10. And since I'm told that we're winning, trial 10 is a 6. What about the trials 2 through 9? There are exactly 10 minus the bookend trials, 10 minus 2 trials in question in the middle, sandwiched between the start and the finish. In these 10 minus 2 or 8 trials, we get a succession of numbers. And all we know is that these numbers can be anything whatsoever excepting 6, because if any of them were 6, we'd have won earlier. Or 7. If any of them were 7, you would lose the game immediately. And so all the intervening numbers, 10 minus 2 of them, have to be any number except 6 or 7. What is the probability or the chance of such an outcome for this conjoint experiment? All right, let's take a look at this. The key idea here is 1, additivity, and 2, independence. Let's take a look anew at the sequence. For any of the intervening trials from 2 through 9, we can get any result whatsoever except 6 or 7. By additivity, the probability of obtaining any of those stated numbers shown there is 1 minus the sum of P6 and P7. In other words, the probability of any of those intervening numbers, 2, 11, 4, 2, and so on, is 1 minus P6 minus P7. Recall that we know P6 and P7 from the table on the left. Very well. This is for one intervening trial. Given that the first trial is a 6, shown shaded in the picture, what can we now say about the conjoint trials 2 through 9 followed by 10? Well, we know the last trial has to be a 6 because we're winning on the 10th trial. And so the probability of that is P6. We know the probabilities of each of the outcomes shown in the intervening trials is 1 minus P6 minus P7. The trials are independent, and therefore we simply multiply the probabilities. There are 10 minus 2, or 8 intervening cases, each with probability 1 minus P6 minus P7, and a final trial yielding a 6 with probability P6. We simply multiply all of them out, and we get 1 minus p6 minus p7 to the power 8 times p6. This is the probability of the sequence with trials 2 through 10 in the picture. And this case now shows us what a general picture is going to be like. We very quickly generalize. Pick any k between 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10. Pick any n, 2 or larger. Now we've got a string of trials. K is the first trial. K is the last trial if you're going to win on the nth trial. And now there are n minus 2 trials in the middle with the bookend trials around them. The n minus 2 trials can be neither K nor 7. And therefore the probability of each of those, the atomic probability is 1 minus PK minus P7. There are n minus 2 of those, followed by a final trial which results in K. Stitch it all together. The probability of winning on the nth trial, given that k was a sum on the first trial, where k here is 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, and n is any number bigger than 2, is obtained by multiplying 1 minus pk minus p7 n minus 2 times, one for each of the intervening trials, and finally multiplying all of that by pk to return to the original trial and win the game. And now we've got all the conditional probabilities at hand. All's over by the shouting. Yes, there's a little bit of technical assembly left over, but it's not very much. 
Let's put it all together. So let's begin by writing down the progression. The probability of winning, given that one of the designated numbers, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, happened in the first trial, is given by sum from the second trial onwards of conditional probabilities. And that we've seen is given by this form which is evocative. Powers of 1 minus pk minus p7 multiplied by a pk. Now, the pk at the end is of little matter. It does not depend upon any. It can come out of the sum. What about the things in the middle? Well, they are, it's a sum of powers. The sum starts at n equal to 2, but the power is n minus 2. So the first power is 2 minus 2 or 0. The next power is 3 minus 2 or 1. The next power is 4 minus 2 or 2. In other words, what you got just writing out the sum is pk times 1, power 0 gives you 1, power 1, power 2, power 3, and so on, ad infinitum. Now, this looks complex, but it's actually beguilingly simple. What we've got is a sum of integer powers. That looks familiar. In fact, we recognize that this is exactly a geometric series, an old friend. Recall that if x is any real number between minus 1 and plus 1, and if we sum the powers of x, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so forth, then this entire series is called a geometric series, and it sums to a very simple expression. It sums to the reciprocal of 1 minus x. We've got a geometric series right here inside the square brackets. Identify the geometric term x with the term 1 minus pk minus p7. And then plug in the geometric series formula, and you get pk, at times the reciprocal of 1 minus 1 minus pk minus p7. A little assembly, and it simplifies to a beautiful and elegant expression. We really couldn't have asked for a simpler expression. The probability of winning eventually Given that you've thrown one of the numbers, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, given a number k in this range, is given by pk divided by pk plus p7. Now, this is satisfactory. It's a complete and comprehensive answer for the question. But before we jump forward, we should pause and take a good hard look at what we've written down. See if it informs the problem. Does it tell us something? An answer as simple as that should have, must have, a direct pathway to it. Now, if we take a look at this, we say, well, what kinds of sequences are we looking at? We throw a k, and we end either with a k or a 7. Nothing in the middle is relevant. And therefore, if you're going to only look at an alphabet of k or 7, the chance of getting k is pk over pk plus p7. Very intuitive, very just, and very correct. 